Unfortunately, there are quite a few serious problems with difference and differences, and we'll cover some of the bigger ones in this part of the lecture. The first is it's probably not uncommon to have violations of the parallel trends assumption. One cool thing that you can do is when you have a violation of the parallel trends assumption, just condition on some variables w here that hopefully will give you parallel trends. So it's a bit like when before we were saying, okay, we need to block some backdoor paths. So let's condition on these variables to block these backdoor paths. Now we have this sort of difference analog of that. So that was to get independence between the potential outcome, like just one of these, and treatment. We had to condition on W, but now we have this difference analog here. So maybe conditioning on some variables, W can help you ameliorate your violation of parallel trends, and then you get parallel trends condition on W, which is fine. You can still do difference and differences estimation there. But maybe something more annoying is that whenever you have an interaction term between treatment and time in the structural equation that generates the outcome y, that means you have a parallel trends violation. So whenever that's the case, you can't have this equality or this, you always have an inequality here between these two or between the analog with w here. Whenever t and tau, so treatment and time interact in their production of the outcome. So that's a pretty major thing that you might worry about when you're using difference and differences methods. And so consider this one where we're conditioning on W here to get parallel trends. What would we need to additionally assume? So when we condition on W to get parallel trends, that's this equation that I've just replicated here, what additional assumption do we need to satisfy now that we're conditioning on W? All right, so say that you do have parallel trends satisfied, that's what we have here, but you're interested in your outcome, not quite in the space, just y here. You're interested in a different space, so some transformation of y. Unfortunately, when you have parallel trends in this space for y, you don't necessarily have it in transformations of y. So for example, with log, this is a common transformation you might do. You might take the logarithm of your outcome. Having parallel trends here does not imply this parallel trend in the logarithmic space. So this is in contrast to the usual unconfoundedness we look at, where we just have yt. So the potential outcome under treatment t is independent of treatment, big T. When we're just looking at that, the scale or the transformation of y doesn't matter. That independence will hold always because you're not looking at a difference. But now that we're looking at a difference, it's like adding a bit of a functional form assumption. And this is a bit unsatisfying, say, to machine learning people or other people who really like more flexible functional forms, as this basically means that the parallel trends assumption isn't a non-parametric assumption. It is a bit of a parametric assumption. Okay, so for example, take the COM estimators that we had back in the estimation week. All the identification going on there was all non-parametric. But here, parallel trends is more like semi-parametric, which is a bit less satisfying. And this is because the parallel trends assumption is inherently about a difference. So this this difference here is a very kind of specific semi-parametric form. Okay, so that concludes the problems with difference and differences. And I'll ask you a few questions about these to make sure that you've internalized these important problems. The first is, is parallel trends satisfied if time and treatment interact in producing the outcome? And the second question is, if parallel trends is satisfied, is it also satisfied for arbitrary transformations of the outcome variable? With that, we'll conclude our lecture on difference and differences. Make sure to go check out the lecture on synthetic controls, not by me, but by the expert on the topic, Alberto Abadi. 
If that lecture is not out yet, one way you can make sure you know when it's out is by subscribing and hitting the bell icon below. If you like these lectures and you want to help me out with my self-esteem that I derive from likes on these lectures, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button below. Thanks for watching.